What's up guys, it's Track and I'm here for another Fortnite review. I'm trying not to let my soul just get completely crushed by the incredibly overpriced and not very good Fortnite blasters. This one actually has a swinging chance. The Scar from Fortnite was a unique shell, a very cartoony kind of real steel inspired shell, and since it used more or less strife internals, it was a pretty good pickup. Like, it was also pretty fairly priced. This one at 40 bucks, you have to really dig the ergo to justify that price bump over a strife, which I think these days cost $30, even though it should cost $20. But corporate greed is a real mother. Let's cut this thing open and see what $40 worth of Epic Games and Hasbro royalties buys ya. There we go. So the blaster itself actually doesn't look that bad. And interestingly enough, if you thought that this was some assembly required, these are applaudedly so standard in strike stock attachment point and barrel attachment points, along with a very long in strike top rail up at the top. This one could be pretty solid. You've got a symmetrical shell, which is my number one complaint about the Strife, and a built-in foregrip. Is it larger than the Strife? Absolutely. Uh, but your built-in foregrip is also gonna house four AA batteries. Let's go ahead and load those up. Quality of the screws on this battery tray, much better than the uh, Elite 2.0 we had to suffer through recently. Maybe your $40 does get you some production standards. Speaking of things that your $40 gives you as a bonus, this one has enough to load up its magazine twice. Awfully interesting. Normally the Fortnite blasters don't have the old double your darts tie-in, but uh, with the world's most cartoonish and silly longest six round magazine, and again, you see the six round magazine, you think that this would hold, you know, seven or eight rounds because it's got so much extra length to it. Nope. That's entirely for aesthetic. You get the same usable space. The follower on this guy is huge. Now, uh, sliding that in, we can start approaching some of those features, but first, oh yes. So satisfying. And you really need to cherish the memory of that peeling off of the painted pieces because this is the only paint on the blaster. You've got paint here and here, all of the gray, appears to be separate panels like this would pop off. The orange is of course a completely separate top rail. This is interestingly enough, uh, it appears to be a mechanical piece, which is a premium over the Elite 2.0 line and some of the new Fortnite blasters, particularly the $60 grenade launcher. I'm just kind of baffled by how they're making these production decisions. Whether they're by region or manufacturer, I'll never know, but I'm telling you that this is one of the better made ones. It's also better ergonomically. The stock is comically short, but it's actually got some really good real steel inspiration in there. The barrel is a little cartoonishly large and will cut you some range, but uh, overall, I kinda like it. I kinda hate that I like it, because I don't play Fortnite anymore. I'd rather play Apex, you know, a battle royale with some real teeth, but this is a, this is a pretty solid shell. Trigger's a little stiff, a little snappy, and of course, I'm not a big fan of mag releases that are in the grip like this, although this one, I think it's just that the mag well is really stiff. This control is pretty easy. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised by this one. All right, so I mean, cartoonish real steel inspirations aside, this is a pretty solid little semi-auto flywheel blaster. We've got room to put a new cage in there and a jam door here, kind of protecting all of your working, moving parts. Simple design, certainly not gonna get you uh, any funny looks if you're playing out in a public park with, with its white and lots and lots of orange all over it. Um, this one's pretty solid. Let's put it over the chronograph, see what kind of FPS it gets. So we're assuming that the IR stands for infrared because it's been a long, long time since I've played Fortnite, truth be told. But uh, the overall ergo of this, the more I play with it, is actually quite good. This foregrip is not bad. It would, my one gripe, be really nice, and I'm sure that somebody will print one of these up. Uh, maybe I'll design one and throw it over on Foam Pro Shop. But a Pictini rail on the bottom of this battery tray would be such an easy include so that you could not be explicitly married to this like very smooth, uh, 
sort of funky angle. It's like, it's a good angle, it's just at the wrong canter. It should be down uh, just a little bit. This is, a, again, a very cartoony way to make possibly a paint job on a white base blaster, which is a, a nice option to have into something that's once again park safe. And the full Pictini rail, I'm sure somebody's gonna have an absolute blast with. Build quality on this one seems solid, which is kind of 50-50 in 2020 from Hasbro. But overall, uh, feels good, looks good, and the gripes about the stock are somewhat alleviated while it is very small, very cartoonish, uh, most people don't have ridiculous wingspans. And it's contoured nicely, and I think that particularly if your uh, foam flinger happens to be under about, like, let's say hypothetically 5'9", I'm sure that its fit is going to be pretty okay. As far as out-of-the-box performance, we're going to take this off so as not to handicap it with barrel drag, and we're going to see what six starts over the chronograph looks like. We won't count that one. So it's actually very interesting. If we're omitting the one outlier where I dedoinked off the back, uh, still getting in the high 60s, which is pretty funny. This was uh, averaging a little over elite standard performance, which is unbelievable. Normally these video game tie-ins come to us neutered because they have to be in game stops and it's assumed that you're gonna give them to adolescents. But uh, for whatever reason, this one's shooting a little hot. Maybe it's my batteries, maybe it's my specific model. However, uh, I will give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it is at least elite standard performance, if not slightly better and I think that this is maybe my favorite Fortnite blaster so far it's not a complete robbery like the grenade launcher at 60 bucks 40 bucks is these days reasonable for an electronic primary I don't think that we're ever going to go back to the days where you can pick up your primary for 20 bucks and dress it up however you'd like but uh if if you sand up all the Fortnite nonsense and you gave this a pretty gnarly paint job I think that you'd have a really cool real steel isomer that delivers the hits if you guys want to see a mod guide for this, or if you want me to start working on these parts, leave me a comment down below. Is this one that you guys are going to pick up? Is 40 bucks too much, too little? Like, I actually would be interested in making some parts for this blaster, because overall, it's just not bad. It's pretty good. It's a little expensive, but you do have to pay the Epic Games tax, and overall ergo on it is solid. It's got plenty of rail and room attachment. I think that this one's a big win. It's nice to see Hasbro return to their roots of modular attachment points and systems, and uh, the fact that it's white lending itself very easily to, to vinyl dye into whatever duplicolor you might have in mind is, uh, is very refreshing as well. Also, I don't want to sound like a broken record, the symmetry is pretty good. So, uh, Hats off, you made about 10 Fortnite blasters and I finally have fallen in love with one of them. Thanks so much for watching guys, much love, Blast on Drake out!